You know we're animatronic fans through and through. And if you're watching this, you probably are too. And if you're also a huge Jurassic Park fan, you know that huge dinosaur animatronics are a fundamental part of the franchise, from the impressive Rexy to the imposing and terrifying Indoraptor. So today, welcome to the best Jurassic Park animatronics from movies and theme parks. T-Rex, Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. One of the most interesting aspects of Fallen Kingdom was the inclusion of many practical effects, including animatronics. In the first installment of the Jurassic World trilogy, there was only one animatronic used, which left animatronic fans and Colin Trevorrow, director of the first film, wanting more. When Trevorrow was co-writing Fallen Kingdom, along with Juan Antonio Garcia Bayona, the director of Fallen Kingdom, they decided that they had to create one of the most intense and impressive scenes from the Jurassic World trilogy, and to do it, they had to have an animatronic. To do this, they called animatronics wizard Neil Scanlon. A team of approximately 18 people designed the T-Rex animatronic. A small-scale maquette was created and shown off, and the full-scale model was intended to move its head, neck, and part of its torso, with the legs and rear being essentially designed as a stand-in for CG effects, added later on in the development process. It has articulated eyes, was able to roar, and the effects team would use an unknown cocktail of slimy liquids to imitate saliva, which was done by manually spreading it onto the creation's teeth and mouth. It was also designed so that Bryce Dallas Howard could be able to ride it. She had to train and learn how to ride the animatronic. According to her, this experience was pretty unique and pretty terrifying at the same time. The main difference between this new T-Rex and Rexy, the first animatronic created for the franchise, which we'll be talking about later, is the advanced technology which with this was created. Rexy was harder to control, but this new T-Rex allows for a more efficient control. This scene is fantastic, and creating this impressive animatronic was worth it. And this was not the only impressive animatronic created for Fallen Kingdom. Indoraptor Fallen Kingdom brought a new threat to the series, the Indoraptor, a genetically modified apex created to be the most intelligent and lethal dinosaur ever seen. This terrifying creature was brought to the screen thanks to a mixture of practical effects and visual effects. In many of the scenes, this creature was brought to life using CGI, but to make it more realistic and immersive in these scenes. A dummy was created so that the actors could interact with the creature, and a giant animatronic arm that was controlled by a puppeteer. But the most impressive of all was a gigantic Indoraptor head, created by Neil Scanlon's team, which had endless movements and expressions. This animatronic is very detailed, and it was sculpted and painted very thoroughly. It was done so that it could give the illusion of having a sick-looking membranous skin. And strangely enough, one of the main inspirations in the design of the creature was Nosferatu, the vampire. The animatronic was controlled by a team of puppeteers that controlled the eyes, nostrils, and jaw. The sounds for the Indoraptor were made from a mix of sounds like a chihuahua, a lion, a pig, a cougar, and a dental drill. This animatronic is amazing and definitely one of our favorites, but nothing compares to the love we have for the next animatronic. Blue, Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. As you can see, Fallen Kingdom is a showcase of animatronics. Since Jurassic World came out, fans all over fell in love with Blue, and this beloved raptor returned with a fundamental role in Fallen Kingdom. That's why the animatronic team of Neil Scanlon created a full-body animatronic of Blue that was so realistic that the actors were actually terrified of getting near it. The animatronic has a massive range of motion, and its creation was one of the most important parts of the entire production. This animatronic was able to sweat, salivate, move its eyes and muscles, and much more. To move the animatronic, a puppeteer team was placed under the table in a special cabin full of controls to handle different parts of Blue's body. It is so impressive to think that each part of the animatronic was articulable. This is a perfect example of how new technology can come together with old school puppetry to create something so impressive and bring an extinct creature back to life. Blue is definitely our favorite Jurassic Park dinosaur, and we love her even more thanks to this animatronic. Allosaurus, Battle at Big Rock On September 15, 2019, Colin Trevorrow surprised fans of the franchise with a new short called Battle at Big Rock. This new short film is canon in the franchise and is set after the events of Fallen Kingdom. The short was produced in secret, so nobody knew what hit them when it was released. The short shows an awesome fight between an Allosaurus and an Pseudoceratops. To create these dinosaurs, Colin Trevorrow called Industrial Light and Magic for everything related to CGI, and John Rosengrant of Legacy Effects to create an animatronic Allosaurus. You might find Legacy Effects familiar, and that's because they were in charge of bringing Grogu to life as an animatronic in The Mandalorian. This short was made with a lower budget than the movies, so only the head and neck of the Allosaurus were created. 
Everything else was enhanced with CGI. Because of the secrecy and the budget for this short, Trevorrow could not film any new scenes for the ending, where we can see many dinosaurs in human environments appear. So, he instead searched through YouTube for videos that could be integrated and used in the film. The rights to each of the online videos were purchased for use in the short film, and dinosaurs were then added to the videos. Jurassic World Roar, Universal Studios, Singapore Fallen Kingdom not only brought us animatronics for the film, but it also inspired a live show called Jurassic World Roar that was open for the temporary celebration Jurassic World Explore and Roar that opened on June 2, 2018 at Universal Studios Singapore. Many people found this show a bit disappointing and cheesy, but no one can deny the puppets and animatronics used for it were super impressive. This show was a small demonstration where many dinosaurs were showcased. We could see velociraptors, pterodons, and an imposing T-Rex in the form of an animatronic. The T-Rex appears at the end of the show, threatening our protagonists. The animatronic has simple movements and is helped with sound and smoke effects. Although this animatronic is not as impressive as the ones we can see in the Jurassic Park rides, it was amazing to be able to see such a huge T-Rex in a live show, and the animatronic is currently retired. Jurassic Park, Rexy When Jurassic Park was in development, one of Steven Spielberg's main priorities was to have animatronic dinosaurs. He wanted all of the dinosaurs that would appear in the movie to be animatronics, but sadly, this was entirely out of the question because of the budget for the movie. So many of the dinosaurs that appeared in the film had to be computer generated. Still, Spielberg wanted at least some animatronics, so the production team started looking for someone that was up to the task. They found the Stan Winston Studios. The studio had already worked on similar projects in the past, so they were perfect for the job. The concept art was drawn, approved, blown up to a full-scale T-Rex, and then used as a reference. A mold was made for the latex skin that would cover the animatronic's interior mechanical structure. A huge team of people worked to make this T-Rex become a reality. Even Disney legend Bob Gurr helped consult for it. When the animatronic was done, it was taken to Soundstage 16 at Warner Brothers' backlot. The 12,000-pound T-Rex was so heavy that the soundstage had to be reinforced so it could be stored there. But the T-Rex was ready to shoot. Now everything was perfect with the animatronic, but the time came to shoot the main road scene. In this scene, the T-Rex ended up getting soaked every day because of the rain the scene needed. The animatronic was covered with foam rubber, and this material is absorbent, so the skin of the animatronic would quickly become saturated during filming, forcing the crew to stop shooting to use towels and fans to dry the animatronic. The other problem was that the animatronic's hydraulic build was messed up by the water's extra weight, which caused the entire rig to start shaking violently, but thankfully, everything worked out in the end, and the animatronic worked beautifully. There was another animatronic created by Stan Winston that was used in the film. This animatronic was used for close-up shots and more intense interactions with the T-Rex. It was not full body, but built from the waist up and was even more detailed than the other one. The exciting thing about this animatronic was that it used an incredibly precise and computed-based action memory that could be used to pre-program movements into the animatronic so it could repeat the same actions, this was very helpful because it allowed the T-Rex to push itself through the bathroom hut wall without hurting the actor during the scene. Triceratops Encounter, Universal Studios Orlando In 1999, Islands of Adventure was opened, and unlike the catastrophic debut of Universal Studios, Islands of Adventure opened with excellent reviews by guests and the press alike. The park opened with six themed islands, Port of Entry, Marvel Superhero Land, Toon Lagoon, the Lost Continent, Seuss Landing, and Jurassic Park. This last island was themed as Isla Nublar, and one of the main attractions that Universal announced for this area of the park was the possibility of having close encounters with dinosaurs, and specifically, with a Triceratops. This encounter was based on the one that Alan Grant and Ellie Sattler in Jurassic Park had. For this attraction, three life-size Triceratops were created. Their names were Topper, Chris, and Sarah. These animatronics were created by MD Robotics, and they were 30 feet long and almost 10 feet high. Universal requested specific requirements for the robots, including the ability to replicate breathing through synchronized ribcage movements, sneezing, snorting, among other things. These animatronics were very impressive, but ironically, the complexity of the animatronic was, to a large extent, the downfall of this attraction, because it caused them to break down regularly. But that was not the only problem. Universal had announced that this encounter would be very personal, but that was far from the truth. The animatronic was pretty far, and there was a barrier that prevented guests from going near it. This caused guests to stop going to see this attraction regularly. Then in 2002, the encounter started to have many problems, and guests found it constantly closed, until it was closed permanently in 2003, and it remained closed and abandoned until 2010. 
where it reopened with a whole new name, Discovery Trail. This didn't last long because it was closed again, to be reopened in 2011 with its original name. But the problems that the attraction had had not been solved, and it closed again in 2012, this time for good. Spinosaurus, Dinosaur Attack. Universal has had the task of improving their character animatronics and shows with each year that passes, and in recent years, they've allowed guests to have close encounters with some of their most popular franchises. This is the case with the Jurassic World characters' encounters, where we can find characters like Blue or a Triceratops meeting guests. These dinosaurs have become more present each year at the parks, and in 2016, Universal Japan surprised guests with a fantastic street show named Dinosaur Attack. In this show, guests could have close encounters with many dinosaurs. The show began when an amazing Triceratops was presented to guests by two staff members so it could interact with guests. Everything seems to be going great until a group of raptors escape and start surrounding the Triceratops and intimidating guests. While all of this is happening, a huge Spinosaurus watches by closely, growling and trying to escape from his cage. After a few minutes of tension, one of the staff members shoots into the air in order to calm the beast down and bring everyone to safety. This show was without a doubt a great experience, with some of the most unique and equally scary animatronics guests had ever seen. But sadly, the show changed in 2017 to become the Dinosaur Wonder Experience show. The show basically remained the same, with the exception of the Spinosaurus that was nowhere to be found. The show suffered more changes, and now it is known as My Friend Dinosaur. This new version of the show is way more friendly. In this latest encounter, we can see that there are no menacing dinosaurs, but they are all friendly with guests. We can also see a new Stegosaurus and a baby Triceratops. T-Rex, Jurassic Park The Ride Universal gambled big when they designed and constructed Jurassic Park The Ride, because the movie hadn't even come out yet. The ride was designed to replicate the atmosphere of Isla Nublar. Guests began the queue by walking under the Jurassic Park sign before waiting under an open wall building. A tour guide appeared on television monitors in the building, reviewing boarding and ride safety. Once you are in the ride, a playful hadrosaur knocks your tour boat off course, causing it to enter the raptor containment area, which was shown to be heavily damaged. The raft then entered the environmental systems building and slowly began to ascend a long lift hill. A voice on the loudspeaker in the building alerted guests that an emergency evacuation was going to be attempted. The raft then climbed a small lift hill that brought it closer to the emergency evacuation drop, but a technician warns guests that a T-Rex is in the building. Ahead of the boat, a waterfall parts, revealing a massive T-Rex that lurches forward, throws its head back and roars, then lowers its massive jaws to within inches of your boat, just as it hits a nearby vertical 85-foot drop. This was a brief but stunning encounter with one of the most intimidating animatronics ever created. Jurassic Park The Ride was closed in Universal Studios Hollywood to make way for a new Jurassic World ride, but we can still find it at Universal Studios Orlando. Indominus Rex, Jurassic World The Ride As we said previously, Jurassic Park The Ride had, and still has at Universal Studios Florida, an amazing and terrifying T-Rex animatronic at the end of the ride. But at Universal Studios Hollywood, this ride was closed to be replaced by Jurassic World The Ride. When Jurassic World The Ride opened back in 2019, it was a huge success. But it became known that the ride opened without being completely finished. And there were some scenes where something was lacking. In the original Jurassic Park ride, guests were taken on a boat ride to see multiple dinosaurs. But a Parasaurolophus popped up and threw the raft off course, causing it to enter the raptor containment area, where the raptors and a T-Rex had escaped. Now, in the new ride, we find that the Indominus Rex has broken out of its cage, and it is heading to the Predator Cove to find the T-Rex. In the final scene, guests could only see before the fall not only the classic T-Rex from the previous ride, but also an Indominus Rex. This Indominus Rex animatronic was not full-bodied, but still, it was very impressive. Universal Studios announced their reopening date after a year-long closure, and with this announcement, they also let guests know that when the park reopened, guests would get to see the new finale for Jurassic World, which features the spectacularly realistic new dinosaur, Indominus Rex. We were all very excited by this announcement, but nobody was prepared for what Universal had created. Many of the problem scenes were fixed. For example, just outside the Predator Cove, we could see some medical kits, surrounded by lots of blood and some non-animated pteranodons. The scene was changed, and now we see the gyrosphere scene, where we can find a gyrosphere, of course, and two compies back from the original Jurassic Park ride, but this time fighting over a Jurassic World hat. Then the second biggest change would be this scene, where there used to be a wall graphic showing info about the T-Rex. 
Universal replaced that with this new Indominus animatronic that is busting out of the wall and biting a guest. This is such a great new addition, but it's not the most impressive. We knew that the ending would change and that it would be better, but we did not expect how amazing it would be. Where we used to see the Indominus Rex head, now we can find an all-new, extraordinarily realistic dinosaur who stakes her claim at the ride's finale in a forceful battle with their arch-rival, the Tyrannosaurus Rex, as described by Universal. The Indominus is now a full-sized dinosaur. The fully articulated figure spans nearly 55 feet horizontally from head to tail, and over 22 feet vertically, and features lifelike movements like blinking eyes, flexing arms and claws, and clenching jaw, as she bares her teeth and lunges at guests. This final battle scene is mind-blowing, and a must-see for any animatronic fan. Jurassic World, the exhibition, admit it, the Jurassic Park movies made us all wish that we could have been alive to see the dinosaurs, even if only for a moment. Well folks, the Jurassic World exhibition is the closest you will ever come to seeing these majestic creatures. This immersive exhibition has enormous animatronic dinosaurs that come to life before your eyes. Sounds exciting, right? These animatronics were created by the Australian-based Creature Technology Co. in collaboration with Jack Horner a renowned paleontologist who also served as an advisor in the Jurassic World movies. Not only that, these dinosaurs are made to look as realistic as possible. They are said to be the closest simulation of dinosaurs ever created, entirely based on the real-world science of dinosaur DNA. So not only do you get to learn about these amazing prehistoric creatures, but you also get a truly immersive and realistic experience, with a pinch of fear thrown in. The exhibition first debuted in Melbourne, Australia, since then, it has been enjoyed by more than a million people across various countries. As soon as you enter, you are greeted by the iconic Jurassic World Gate. From there, you get to take a virtually guided tour where you encounter all the various dinosaurs. When we say these animatronics are lifelike, we mean that they are lifelike. The Brachiosaurus animatronic is 7 meters tall, and the Pachyrhinosaurus is a whopping 9 meters. The best part? You get to come face to face with the formidable Indominus Rex, hear and hear its ferocious roars. You also get to interact with the baby dinosaurs. They also have a live entertainment experience, filled with life-size dinosaurs and people who have to face obstacles that they overcome through action-packed fight sequences. Truly an awe-inspiring and fun-filled event for the whole family. Apatosaurus Jurassic World Many people tend to attack the Jurassic World sequels for their use of CGI, claiming that there is little to no use of practical effects in the films. But they do not take into consideration that these new movies use the best of both worlds, great practical effects mixed with the magic of CGI, to continue to expand the legacy of the franchise. In our previous video, we talked about some of the thousands of practical effects that were used in Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. Some people think that the first film in the trilogy did not use many practical effects, but this is far from the truth. For Jurassic World, Colin Trevorrow brought legacy effects to create many, many props, and above all, one of the most impressive animatronics in the whole franchise, the Apatosaurus. Who are we kidding? All these animatronics are impressive, to be honest. To create this dinosaur, the team first created a 3D model, which they later made out of foam. After that, the figure was sculpted. But there was a problem. Later in production, the team was told that the scale of the dinosaur was much larger than they had expected. So, to not waste time in the work that the team had already done, they made a 3D scan of the sculpture, sent all the info into a computer, and printed the sculpture again, in the new and correct size that was needed. Then this figure was taken to the molding department, where it would be determined how many parts the sculpture had to be divided in, in order to create the mold. Having these divisions, the team created the mold using multiple layers of fiberglass, mixed with epoxy resin. The molds were then filled with a special mixture of soft latex to make the dinosaur skin. They put it in the oven, and 12 hours later, voila, a new dinosaur was born or at least the outside of the dinosaur was done. While part of the team worked on the outside of the Apatosaurus, the rest of the team worked in the mechanics. For this animatronic, a cable system was used instead of using hydraulics. This might seem old school, but it turned out to be very practical for this specific scene. They used springs to counteract the weight and for the head. A series of parallelograms were used to allow the animatronic to move more efficiently and realistically. To finish the animatronic, a foamy cover was made to put the mechanics in and then it was wrapped in spandex so that the latex and the last aesthetic details could be added. The beauty of this animatronic is that it was created with so many micro-expressions and details, because Colin Trevorrow wanted the audience to connect with the creature. The Apatosaurus is capable of simulating the movements of the face muscles, creating expressions using its eyes, sneezing, swallowing, 
and a unique several mechanism was designed just for the actions of the tongue. Once the dinosaur was assembled, the team began the rehearsals with it. This mechanical puppet was controlled by four puppeteers. The dinosaur was taken to Kauai, Hawaii to film the scene with Bryce Dallas Howard and Chris Pratt. The two actors connected automatically with the animatronic, and this scene ended up being one of the most emotional parts of the film. Colin Trevorrow fought a lot so that these animatronics would be included in the trilogy, and thankfully, he was able to win. Not only did they create these fantastic creatures, but this also allowed Legacy Effects to continue the work and legacy of Stan Winston. Spinosaurus, Jurassic Park 3 We talked about how Legacy Effects was in charge of the practical effects for the Jurassic World movies, but where did Legacy Effects come from? Well, Legacy Effects was founded by Lindsay McGowan, Shane Mahan, John Rosengrant, and Alan Scott, who were all supervisors at Stan Winston Studios for over 20 years. The connection to all of this is that John Rosengrant, one of Legacy Effects' co-founders, also worked on another Jurassic Park movie. That's right, he supervised the project for Jurassic Park 3, specifically the Spinosaurus animatronic. To create this animatronic, the team took all the knowledge that they acquired with the construction of the T-Rex animatronics from the previous films and replicated them in this new animatronic. The process is very similar to the one we talked about in the Apatosaurus, but the difference is that because this animatronic is older, there were no 3D models or 3D scanners to help out for reference of the scale, and the size of this animatronic made its creation very challenging. The head alone was 6 feet. Not only that, but the animatronic had to be able to be submerged in water, so a special material had to be added to seal any type of opening that could let water through. Its head is made of graphite so that it can be resistant, and all the parts are welded to a mechanical substructure. The welding process has to be so strict that a specialized agency has to come to approve if everything is correctly welded. This animatronic was much larger than Rexy, and transporting it was quite a feat. The main door of the studio had to be removed so it could be taken out with the help of huge cranes. After this, the animatronic was installed on the set of Universal Studios in LA, in a particular track that allowed the animatronic to move. It is controlled thanks to a telemetry device, so every move that a puppeteer does is replicated in the animatronic. The major scene of this animatronic is when it fights the T-Rex. To create this scene, the team took one of the Jurassic Park Lost World animatronics, repaired him, and literally had the two animatronics fight to the death. And when we say literally, we mean literally. Since the production had planned to destroy the animatronics after the movie was filmed, they decided that it would be a good idea to have them fight each other until they were destroyed. The puppeteers were slamming the two animatronics into each other to get as much footage as they could. The team was a little on edge about it because they'd put a lot of time and work into the animatronics, but the producers and studio execs were having a great time watching this, rooting for either the T-Rex or the Spinosaur to win. In the end, the Spinosaurus knocked the head off of the T-Rex, the head collapsed, the neck tore open in the back, and hydraulic fluid shot out of it, almost like blood spurting. As for the Spinosaurus, we contacted Stan Winston Studios a while ago, and they confirmed that the animatronic had indeed been dismantled. Dilophosaurus, Jurassic Park We all talk about Rexy when talking about Jurassic Park animatronics, but how could we not? I mean, look at this marvel. But we all seem to forget about another impressive animatronic from the same film, the Dilophosaurus or the Spitter as he is most commonly known. But the same thing happened at Stan Winston Studios when they were assigning the teams to create the different dinosaurs. Everybody wanted to work on Rexy or even the Triceratops, but only Rick Dallinson was interested in making the Spitter. So from that moment on, he was in charge of the team to bring this eccentric dinosaur to life. Just like with the previous animatronic, the team began creating the concept. Then they used footage of ostriches to figure out how the dinosaur should move, and they made a mechanism that would recreate the movement of these animals on the animatronic. After creating this mechanism, they improved the dinosaur's design so it would work better, and made it on a larger scale so they could perform various tests. When the foot movements were ready, the first prototype for the next started to be made. This prototype consisted of three joints and some springs to handle the movement of the head independently. This was made so that they could give the character natural and fluid movements, and so they could have more control over the animatronic. Next came the fun part. As we all know by now, the team needed the animatronic to spit, and to do this, they created a paintball gun-type mechanism that shot a substance made of methyl and jelly. They also made a special rig for the frill mechanism, made with a latex rubber sheet that was glued into some support rods. The most complex part of the animatronic was the dinosaur's tongue which was one of the most complex mechanisms developed at that time. It was a two-stage tentacle mechanism, and the third section was the base of it, which would also rotate up and down. When all of this was done, 
The whole thing was assembled so they could practice the movements that the animatronic would have to do on the scene. They mounted the creature on Shane Mahan so he could create the motion of the dinosaur's jumps. A trench was made on the floor so that he was hidden under the set, moving the animatronic's legs while the rest of the team took care of the rest of the movements. The spitter is one of the most exciting creatures that Stan Winston Studios created during the production of Jurassic Park, and it deserves our admiration. T-Rex is Jurassic Park The Lost World For Jurassic Park The Lost World, Stan Winston's crew created two real-sized T-Rex animatronics. These, unlike Rexy that came before them, were only built from head to torso. John Rosengrant explained that they had discovered on Jurassic Park that there wasn't a lot of need for head-to-tail T-Rex because the creature was so huge. Shots that were wide enough to show the whole body became CG shots, and shots that used their T-Rex rig were close enough that you only saw the head and about half of its body in the frame. So that's why they decided to build these head-to-mid-body T-Rexes. And again, the creation of these impressive animatronics is practically identical to the process to the other dinosaurs that we had mentioned. But what's really interesting is that this time, instead of securing the T-Rexes to a motion-based platform, as had been done for Jurassic Park, the crew mounted them to motor-driven carts, capable of moving the multi-ton rigs forward or backward on 80 feet of track, set in concrete on the soundstage floor. This was super convenient for the scenes in which the mother and father T-Rexes attack a trailer at the edge of a cliff, with Ian and Sarah inside. The dinosaur's mobility was a priority in this scene, especially because the T-Rexes were going to really destroy the trailer. That's right, that scene wasn't faked. Those T-Rexes were slamming into that thing, breaking glass and shaking it. Which is ironic because, as we learned previously, these were the same T-Rexes used for Jurassic Park 3, and we know how they ended up, decapitated by a Spinosaurus. These two animatronics are extraordinarily and extremely imposing, not only because of their size, but also for the capacity of destruction that they ended up having. Velociraptors, Jurassic Park The Lost World, Stan Winston Studio. We know that there can't be a Jurassic Park movie without the Velociraptors. And honestly, since the team at Stan Winston Studios created the first design for these animatronics, they have been making sure that each new version is better and more terrifying than the one before. So that's what they did when they were designing the Velociraptor animatronics for Jurassic Park The Lost World. They took the most terrifying dinosaur and gave it an upgrade. There were many changes made to the original sculpture. The paint job was radically changed. And, of course, because in this second installment, there would now be male dinosaurs and not only female ones like in the first movie, there had to be changes made so that there could be a difference between them. They literally skinned the animatronic and began separating its parts into many different sections so that they could add different shapes and be able to transform the dinosaur visually. This whole process took about a month. After that, a total of three full-scale animatronics, one female, two male, were constructed with complete mechanical upgrades to the design. Of course, the idea for these raptors was to make the Velociraptors in Jurassic Park The Lost World much better than the ones used in the original Jurassic Park film. And in order to do so, the team at Stan Winston Studios decided to use telemetry-controlled hydraulics instead of the radio cables that were utilized in the first film. This gave the raptors much more fluid and lifelike movements. And not only that, but it gave the animatronic movements more speed. Because of this change, the response of the movements was quicker than the slow response that they used to have, due to the levers and movement of the cables. The upgrade in the mechanics also meant that instead of the 18 total puppeteers required to man the cable-operated animatronics in the original Jurassic Park, the new Raptor animatronics needed as few as two operators, and these two operators had all the power to make the animatronics moves precise and swift. The interior armor was created from aluminum, so that the animatronic was as light as possible. That way it could move quickly and use less energy so that accelerometers could be used so that when the movement stopped, they could do so in a smoother way. The system that was used for the next was one of the most complex systems made at this time. Due to the movements and weight of the raptor's head, electronics had to be designed to compensate and slow it down. The whole work was so impressive that when the final animatronics were presented, both producers and the actors were shocked to see the quality of the finished product. These animatronics, fully completed, measured 6 feet tall and 13 feet long, and are, without a doubt, some of the best animatronics that Stan Winston's team has ever created. Sick Triceratops, Jurassic Park, Stan Winston Studio 
we can agree that all of the dinosaur scenes in Jurassic Park are seriously impressive. But one of the most amazing and lifelike of all is the one where Ellie Sattler and Alan Grant stop the tour to investigate a Triceratops who is constantly becoming ill. One of the main reasons for this scene was actually to allow the audience to get up close and personal with a dinosaur and witness a magical moment. And it truly is a magical moment. But being able to create this scene was a huge challenge, not only in terms of logistics, but also with the synchronization of movements to bring this creature to life. To bring to life this Triceratops, Stan Winston's studio designed and built a full-sized puppet that performed alongside the actors on location in Hawaii. There were two mech designers in charge of controlling the animatronic, Al Souza and Shannon Shea. To create this animatronic, the team went through the same process as with any other animatronic. Sculpture, molds, fiberglass, mechanisms, etc. They built a small-scale version of the character before the full scale, so they could show how everything was going to work before building it. The breathing mechanism was basically a post underneath that pushed a lever up and down to move the skin up and down. The tail mechanism had movement from side to side and also up and down. The animatronic had no hydraulics. It was all mechanical, a lot of cables and pulleys, and the tail was a direct linkage mechanism. Out of all the animatronics, and puppets created for the movie, this huge Triceratops was the only one that shot on location. So it had to be shipped, in parts, to Hawaii. To be able to control the animatronics, a big hole was dug in the ground with a platform over the top so that the puppeteers could be underneath, working the breathing mechanism, the mouth, and the tongue. They also worked the forearms and the legs. All of those were all cable controlled. A camera was set up on the surface, and the team had a monitor underneath so that they could be directed by Stan Winston on how to move the animatronic. He wanted really smooth movements, and to coordinate the mouth and tongue movements with the rising and falling of the chest, and make them really slow and deliberate. So the Triceratops looked really sick. But because there was no audio, they didn't have any walkie-talkies. The team could only be guided by seeing Stan on the monitor, pointing and gesturing to what he wanted. Apart from the fantastic movements, the cosmetics like the pus, the spit, the inflamed vesticles of the tongue, and the roomy eyes made this Triceratops look so real. The cast couldn't even believe their eyes when they first saw it. This is just another of the many examples that show that the Stan Winston studio is one of the best studios ever. Jurassic World Exhibition Animax Designs when we think of dinosaur animatronics, our minds go straight to Stan Winston Studios. They set the bar so high in creating animatronics, especially dinosaur animatronics. But since then, there have been companies that have created fantastic dinosaur animatronics. And recently, there is one in particular that has exceeded all expectations and challenges in the creation of animatronics and interactive experiences. This company is Animax Design. In our opinion, this Nashville-based studio has created some of the most impressive interactive animatronics in the world. This studio deserves a full video covering their animatronics, and we'll make that one for sure. Animax Design has worked along with Universal, Disney, and Warner Bros, among others to bring some of the best interactive experiences. Also, the studio was responsible for creating all the animatronics of Hagrid's Magical Creatures Motorbike Adventure, among other rides. But without a doubt, one of their best projects is the Jurassic World Exhibition. The exhibition is impressive, but today we will focus on two of the most impressive animatronics ever seen, the T-Rex and the Indominus Rex. When guests arrive at the Indominus Rex display, they can see the cage completely empty, but suddenly, the Indominus Rex emerges from within the cage. The movements of this animatronic are so organic and natural that we can even see how it shakes its head as if it had just woken up. There is a large piece of meat in the cage, and the Indominus immediately notices it and analyzes it for a while. Then, without further warning, snap! She detaches it with great force and then eats it and proceeds to roar with great power. This animatronic is not only immense, but the movements and textures make you think it's really a living creature, and it is seriously terrifying. The Indominus is not a full-body animatronic, but that does not make it one bit less impressive. But without a doubt, the best animatronic of this exhibition is the T-Rex. When guests arrive at her cage, everything is empty. But suddenly, a loud roar can be heard, and the T-Rex can be seen rapidly moving towards the audience. The creature destroys the lights, and they begin to flicker. 
which adds a big dose of terror to the experience. The T-Rex is a full-body animatronic that stays for a few minutes terrifying the audience, and then proceeds to leave from where it came from. This is where the tour ends. As we mentioned before, the work of Animax designs are impeccable, and fortunately, they are not the only dinosaurs that they have created. Various animatronics, Jurassic World Dominion, John Nolan Studio. When this movie was announced, one of the best pieces of news was that it was confirmed that this film would have so many animatronics and use of practical effects. This was confirmed by Colin Trevorrow, who has given some previews through social media. In these videos, we can see remotely controlled animatronic mechanisms and small triceratops animatronics, among other images. An article dedicated to the animatronics made by John Nolan's studio appeared in Fangoria magazine, in which they go into detail and talk about the new animatronics. The article also shows so many images of the animatronics and the team working on them. Some of these animatronics are a new version of the Dilophosaurus with new textures, paint job, and of course, a different mechanism. A pyroraptor, which makes the first time we see an animatronic dinosaur with feathers, dimorphodons, and most impressive of all, a massive gigantosaurus animatronic. In total, the team built 38 dinosaurs, 14 species. Some were tiny, like the Cumbies. And then there's the Giga, which had the head the size of a car. Chris Pratt published a video where the animatronic head of the Gigantosaurus appears in all its glory. The animatronic is seriously impressive and equally terrifying. The studio in charge of bringing these animatronics to life is John Nolan Animatronics. John Nolan and his team have been in charge of bringing endless creatures to life, mixing different disciplines and techniques to create them. One of the main characteristics of Nolan's animatronics is that they do not have a specific process. Each animatronic is unique in both design and its operation and mechanisms. One of the most outstanding works of the studio are the animatronics of the Dark Crystal Age of Resistance. We can honestly say that the scenes with animatronics in the movie are incredible, and we get to see one of the cutest animatronics we've ever seen. There are still many more Jurassic Park animatronics to cover, and be sure to subscribe so you don't miss it when it comes out.